Hi, and welcome to this week's episode of the Cost of Carry podcast. My name is James Chi. Let's get started. Today will be a discussion about getting into a home with the first home loan deposit scheme. First home buyers in Australia are in an enviable position at the moment with a host of both state and federal government incentives available, making it far easier than it has ever been to get into a home of their own. While there are a range of grants and exemptions available, in the current environment, one of the most effective is the First Home Loan Deposit Scheme, also known as, or abbreviated to the acronym of FHLDS, in case you see that anywhere in the media. The First Home Loan Deposit Scheme is a federal government-backed initiative that allows first home buyers to buy a home without needing a large deposit. Generally speaking, most lenders like to see a home home buyer contribution of about 20%, which is made up through the deposit and also homeowner equity, um, which equates to around an 80% LVR or loan to value ratio. When the deposit drops below 20%, the buyer is often asked to pay what is called lender's mortgage insurance or LMI. And LMI is an insurance policy that effectively protects the lender if either the value of the property falls significantly or if the borrower gets themselves into financial trouble. While LMI is a one-off premium, the cost can be well over $10,000, which puts more pressure on the home buyer, who is also being asked to make a deposit. As a result, the federal government introduced the First Home Loan Deposit Scheme, which allows a first home buyer to contribute as little as 5% as a deposit, and the government will effectively act as the guarantor to the loan. In some ways, this is similar to a guarantor loan, which would commonly see a first home buyer's parents acting as the guarantor. However, the added benefit of the first home loan deposit scheme is that it can be used in conjunction with the other incentives and grants that are available to first home buyers. This means that a first home buyer will still be able to access the first home first home owners grant and stamp duty exemptions that most state governments provide. The first home loan deposit scheme is also available to be used alongside some of the other federal and state government building grants such as Home Builder. However, there is an important consideration when looking at the packages. To access the first home loan deposit scheme, you will still be required to contribute a 5% deposit from genuine savings. That means things like the first homeowner's grant won't count towards your deposit. So first off, is accessing the First Home Loan Deposit Scheme. While the First Home Loan Deposit Scheme will be able to get people into their first home faster, there are still a list of requirements that you must meet to access the program. The first is that the property you're intending on purchasing must be less than the various caps that have been set for each state and territory. So for example, in New South Wales, if you're buying in a capital city or regional centre, the cap is $700,000, whereas in the rest of the state, it is $450,000. In Victoria, it is $600,000 for a capital city and regional centre, but in the rest of the state, it is $375,000. And in Queensland, a capital city and regional centre is 475000 whereas in the rest of the state it is 400000 This information can be found um, on the state government website or perhaps at a lender of your choice to, for a discussion. 
Um, but these limitations aside, there are also requirements around how much you're able to earn, for example. So singles, for example, singles must be making less than $125,000 per year, while couples, couples can um, only earn $200,000. Each financial year, the Commonwealth Government makes 10,000 grants available and 5,000 of these are allocated to both Commonwealth Bank and National Australia Bank, while the remaining 5,000 are spread among, among second and third tier, tier lenders. It's also important to note that you will still have to meet the normal serviceability requirements to access the grant. That means you will have to have enough income to service any debt based on your current earnings and expenses. So, for example, even though the deposit is um, only re is has been reduced to five percent, does your income, which again must fall within those requirements of either one hundred twenty-five thousand? or 200,000 still set, uh, service the 95% loan at the 95% rate. Similarly, have you also purchased a property that falls within the caps? And also, have you been successful, successful in your application to access the scheme? So there are a lot of considerations that go on, and the best way to see if you're able to access the first home loan deposit scheme is by speaking with a mortgage broker who will be able to assess your current situation and what you're looking to achieve. And another note is that like some of those rates that are you see on TV that are really low and perhaps they're almost too good to be true, not everyone can access them and likewise not everyone is eligible for these types of schemes and grants. So perhaps there is an issue with perhaps your credit profile or perhaps there is an issue with your um, loan conduct or previous credit history with um, other lenders um, such as credit card institutions or personal loans. But the main thing here is that if this is your first loan, this isn't going to be really aimed at investors, obviously. And what I mean by that is if you're showing that you're, you know, purchasing names in companies or perhaps um, have turnover properties, for example, this, this is probably not what you're looking for. Um, or eligible for. This is more about um, first-time um, homeowners, maybe their young families, young professionals maybe, that are looking to get their foot into Australian property. Um, so it is a conversation to have not only with the household or within the household but also with a finance professional because it is a it is a process and there is a proper um, application that needs to be filled out. It isn't just given out at random because they're at certain, um, all the grants are available at certain institutions. Obviously there, there are a certain number that can be issued by each, each bank, but for the most part, um, the strength of your application will really be a determining factor in your um, success in in gaining one of these um, government guarantees, I suppose. And that concludes this episode of the Cost of Carry podcast. Thank you all for tuning in, and I'll see you in the next episode.